my name is Helen. I work for the Community Development and Health Network. We are an organisation who works regionally across Northern Ireland and our mission is to end health inequalities. So the reason why we did this research, um, really this came out of the Medicaid, the World Health Organisation um, had a challenge to um, or to, to reduce a global patient safety challenge, a global patient safety challenge to reduce medication aid harm by 50%. Um, the Department of Health in Northern Ireland took them up on that challenge and produced a medication safety plan for Northern Ireland. We have a good working relationship with the Department of Health. We've worked on a number of projects and they asked us um, how, how they could involve communities in, and patients and people in the, in the implementation of the plan. And when we looked at the plan, what we realised was that health inequalities didn't have a big focus. And really the plan was focused on medication safety from a health and social care perspective. So all the things that they were doing within health and social care um, to improve medication safety, but not really considering what happens when people go home. So the research aim was there on the screen to discover the social circumstances behind unsafe medication practices and avoidable medication needed harm to inform the implementation of the transform medication plan in Northern Ireland approach, and it was done by the Department of Health. So health inequalities um, are the unfair, unfair and unavoidable differences in health status experienced with people in our society. And these differences are caused by the social determinants of health. And if we want to tackle health inequalities, we need to focus on the social issues in the individual communities as well as the medical ones. So research shows that socioeconomic factors have more an impact on the health and physical environment, health behaviours and health care. And with that in mind, the research focused on the social factors that impact on medication safety. The things that are going on in people's lives or parts of them that can cause them to take medication in the wrong way. Just some stats about health inequalities in Northern Ireland. Um, everyone's right to good health, but in Northern Ireland, people with poor backgrounds suffer that health die younger compared to those that are better off. And we know that health follows a social gradient, and those experiencing inequality are at higher risk of ill health. In Northern Ireland, avoidable deaths are three times higher in the deprived areas. In most deprived areas, men are dying seven years earlier and women are dying five years earlier compared to the least deprived areas. And what, what really struck us whenever we started doing this research was 50% more prescription items are, are prescribed in the deprived areas compared to the least deprived areas. So in terms of the methodology we used, we used a community-based participatory research approach. And a key characteristic of CBP is the intentional engagement of community members to enable them to share their unique perspectives and local knowledge on issues that matter to them. It's a partnership approach to research and begins with a topic of importance to the community and has the aim of combining knowledge and action achievement. And on this screen now you can see some of the differences in blue, the traditional research and a CBR approach. And just to highlight some of them, um, people are the research subjects in traditional research, but people are participants and collaborators in a CBR approach. The issues identified in traditional research are based on research data and funding priorities, whereas the community identified issues important to the CBR approach. Um, the study design is developed by researchers and traditional research with community involved with the design to our approach. The recruitment process is developed by researchers and traditional research, but the community gets guidance in the CPR approach. And then traditional research findings are printed in academic, academic style and peer journals. In the CBPR approach, community members help with interpretation and dissemination of findings. And I'm just going to explain a bit more about our approach in this next slide. Um, this is an overview of our methodology. Um, so the first stage was a desk research, and the second second stage was our stakeholder engagement. And there's three parts to that set, step two. The first was a voluntary community organization survey. So we put a survey out to community voluntary organizations um, through our membership in CPHN, and we got 250 responses. And in that survey, the, really the purpose of the survey was to find out whether um, medication safety was an issue in communities. And it did come back through that survey was an issue and that it was the health inequalities issues, which really made us say, okay, this research we should be doing. It also helped us identify people to take part in the research process. So we had asked people to fill in, give the contact details if they'd be interested in hosting a focus group, being part of the research steering group, be part of any other aspect of research and kind of their contact details and contact them throughout the process to invite them to get involved. The next stage was stakeholder interviews and we did Six interviews with voluntary community organisations and six interviews with health and social care staff. And really, the purpose of the interview 
was to find out what the research question should be and who we should sample in groups because this was an exploratory piece of research and we weren't sure what the research questions would be at that stage and really the people helped us have to find those. We then wrote a report based on the first two parts and brought it back to the STEAM group and then with the STEAM group's help we decided on the research question sample. The next stage was the focus groups and we had eight in the community and four in health and social care which I'm going to talk about in more detail on the next slide. The next stage was an interim findings report where we wrote up everything we found in, in those groups. And then the next stage is stage five, which was where we did stakeholder engagement again, where we invited everyone that had been involved in the process to that up to that point to a knowledge exchange workshop in Belfast and um, with 33 people to part. And we had put find, presented all the findings to them and then asked them what they thought of the findings so far, what they thought stood out, and also what we should do next. What should the recommendations be? Where should we go with this? stage. We took all that, that back um, and we wrote a draft for final, a draft final report and we sent that back out to the research participants again um, to get their final feedback on, on what uh, any changes and anything we thought should change and then we produced the final report which was launched in, uh, last year. Our judging just asked. So just about the sample that we that took part in the research, we had a community sample with eight focus groups, 63 people. There on the screen, and um, the gender, the age range, and the, the trust areas that people um were from. We had four groups from socially deprived areas, but also young parents, people in mental health, courage, people, young people, and men's group. And what was really interesting for us in this research was how we got those groups was because we have good relationships with different groups throughout Northern Ireland. We were when we identified the sample. We were able to contact organisations and ask would they host a focus group for us and those organisations hosted the focus group and got the people to come to the focus group for us to part in the research. We also did um, um, four focus groups with health and social care staff with 25 people and a wide range of health and social care staff to part in those focus groups and we did get after the approval of health and social care to speak to health and social care staff as part of that. So in terms of the findings, um, we had there were six key themes that arose in the findings. So there was they're up on the screen there, the social terms of health, health literacy, reporting Irish concerns, making decisions, health and social care, and the check gas. Um for the because we only have limited on time in this presentation, I'm going to put up the terms of health. But if you try to a copy of the report, you can read all those findings as well. But really the findings are reflect with lived experience and local local knowledge. And interestingly, the health literacy, um, it's recognised as social term to health. And when we first did first plan this research, we knew health literacy could, could come up and we thought that would come up as social terms to health. But what we found was it was a dominant theme throughout the findings that actually warranted it its own section in the report. So in terms of some of the findings around the social determinants of health, we found that people intentionally um, make an active decision and unintentionally by forgetting current or circumstances that are described. And I'm just going to explain a bit about that with some of the quotes and um, uh, some of the quotes from people who took part in the research on there. So you can see there in the top somebody said, if you're anywhere else but at home, I don't take them because I'm sick. And that came through time and time again where people said, if I'm out of my routine, I just forget to take my medication. If I'm not at home, if I'm away for the night or something else happens, that you really forget to take the medication. But then you have in the bottom left there, somebody was talking about how they didn't take the medication because they were current with somebody else. They said, I purposely don't take amitriple in the nights I stay over my granny's because I know it makes me tired and I have to be able to stay awake because I have to hear her if she gets out of bed. And that actually came up quite a bit where people said, oh, I don't take it because something else is happening that day. You know, they mightn't take their, their tablets um, if they give them water attention. If they're going out, somebody actually said, I didn't take my tablets to come to this focus group today because they didn't want to have to run out of the toilet halfway through this focus group. People are talking about how they don't take the medication um, because of different things. And then in the top right, you have, when my husband died, of course, my kids gave me this wee tab that night and I didn't know what was taken. And really, we're highlighting that because what we find is that people shared medication quite a bit, but it wasn't necessarily often for altruistic purposes. People were saying, oh, they're going through a hard time, give them a wee tablet, it'll be all right, we'll help them through that. But not actually considering circumstances or the medication safety issues of giving somebody a medication that they want to described. Sorry, and then the one, bottom, minute, one minute. One minute. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to fly through this. Um, I, it's just somebody who said about um, 
difficulty of medication. It's just a bit difficult to do medication. In terms of health literacy, um, people had varying abilities accessing, receiving, and understanding instructions, advice, and guidance with their medication. And you can see on the screen some of the different things that people said. People said, half the medication I'm on, I don't even know if I should be on it because I've been taking medication so long. People didn't know why they're on the medication and what they're on it for. And then people not understand the medication instructions, as you can see there on the bottom. Years I've been taking levothyroxine. Only recently I found out I should have been taking it half an hour before eating and some week before taking it correctly, I feel like a new person. And then you have there on the bottom there somebody saying, I just hear a lot of people, I was listening to other people saying, oh, I can't take them, no good, they're damaging. And what we find was that a lot of people um, were really influenced by their family, friends, other things going on, um, and stopping taking medication. And um, there were many different people influenced that, including um, networks, social media, and different impacts on that. So key learning and conclusions. Um, Really, the medication safety is a health inequalities issues. Everyday lives and social circumstances can impact people's ability to take the medication. People have varying abilities in assessing, understanding, and using information with the medication and sometimes unrecognized by health and social care staff. Health literacy is influenced by many sources, family, friends, community, and native media, and local native social practices need to be considered in the implementation of medication and other medication safety issues. Uh, just one last slide, um, because I know I'm struggling with time here. So just, we had actually written 14 recommendations for the implementation of the medication safety plan. I've just highlighted for them on the screen there. Um, one of them's taken into account uh, the social terms of health and health literacy and the implementation of the plan. Second is co-producing a community health literacy um, program. The third is developing, developing a communication awareness and promotion engagement strategy for the plan. Fourth is reviewing training and learning the medication safety for those who work in health and social care to ensure health, social terms of health and health included and then we also have seven recommendations for beyond the plan and i've just highlighted that one at the bottom about reconvening the regional health literacy forum because that's actually happened I can't say it's just because of this research but it actually happened a bit a month ago so it's really great that that's up and running and there's just my contact details on the screen